Awesome. All right. First off, thanks for having me do this deal breakdown. Um, very excited about it. We were asked to do it last month, but since we're still in the closing process, we pushed it back to, uh, to this month. And um, yeah, I'm going to be going through a, a, an interesting deal that we actually sent out first as a wholesale deal and tried to wholesale, didn't get any offers and decided to take down ourselves. Um, so this deal is in, in Bull Mountain and we could go ahead and hit the next slide there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break down um, first just, just the trajectory of this lead, getting the lead off market and how we worked it. And then we'll get into the rehab and the rehab figures and what we actually did with it. But this is a text message deal that we, um, we first texted the seller in October 30th of, of last year. And he responded to that. And we reached out to him on February 8th, which was horrible. <laughs> so don't do that. Don't let five months go by between getting a lead and reaching out to them. We were super backlogged. Uh, but the important thing is that we did do the follow-up over the phone and the seller. Um, so this, it was originally a driving for dollars lead on a duplex. And when we followed up with him, he said, I do want to sell the duplex. And I also have another single family house in Bull Mountain I want to sell. So at first he told us that he would sell for 500. Um, we pulled up Zillow. Zillow was like, I think it was around 575, 585. So just with a nice looking house like this, I mean, this is pretty much the, the photo that was on Zillow. We figured something like that for 75K under Zillow, there might be something there. So we set an appointment with the seller. Um, and then we went through our, our four pillars of pre-qualification, which we do in every lead. So we asked his timeline, which was ASAP. He was, um, well, and that leads us to the next point, which is motivation. He wanted to sell right away because he was moving to another state. His wife was moving back to Maryland. He said, I love my wife very much. I want to follow her and I don't want to manage my portfolio from afar. So he wanted to sell it right away. Um, condition, he said it's perfect and didn't need anything. And then we saw on Zillow that it had been listed. Yeah, in no, it had also been listed um, in November for 575 and then the listing had been taken down. So, um, so we, we set the meeting, we go out there the next day, we met with the seller at a restaurant and we still hadn't seen the property yet, but based on comps, we figured it'd be worth around 600,000. So we figure, okay, if we could get it for a little bit less than 500, we probably have a deal here, like a wholesale deal. Um, the seller told us that there were tenants and that he was paying them to move. So we said, okay, great. And he said, tenants won't be an issue. So after some negotiation, we locked up the deal at the restaurant for 487,000. All right, we could go to the next slide. Thank you, Trent. So, um, after locking it up, we then try to get into the house. So we contact the tenants, the tenants are ghosting us. Uh, he said, well, try my, try my property manager. So we try the property manager and then she tells us, well, the tenants haven't paid rent for six months, <laughs> which he didn't tell us at all. He said that, yep, tenants are great. They won't be an issue. And so we go back to with the seller. We say, hey, we just found out that they haven't paid rent for six months. He goes, I didn't know. I, I, I knew nothing about that. He said, okay, well, we might need some more time then to work things out with the tenants. And he says, I'm giving you such a good deal. This house needs nothing. You close on the date that you said you would, or we could always cancel the deal and I'll just list it. So I said, no, 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 we don't want to cancel. We want to make this work. And then um, that put me on the spot to try to figure out how to, how to wholesale this deal or wholesale it um, with tenants in the house that weren't responding to me. So... We, uh, on February 17th, we reached out to the tenants. Um, they, they fi we finally connected with them. And then they told us, you know, of course, their side of the story. They said that they hadn't been paying rent because the seller hadn't made repairs that were much needed. Um, they said that the seller offered them 5,000 cash for keys and then took away the offer. Um, she even claimed that the property manager told her to stop paying rent. Apparently, because the property manager is a realtor and uh, and the seller had, had listed it last November with a different realtor. The property manager got jealous and vindictive and then told the tenants to stop paying. So this is everything that the tenants telling us. 
So we just sort of like listened, listened, listened. She said, everyone's lying to me, blah, blah, blah. But we just listened and tried to become her friend. Um, property manager then posted a 24-hour notice of walkthrough. And when we showed up for that, we were denied because of a COVID exposure. They said that they had contracted COVID and they needed seven days. And, uh, and then we continued building the relationship with the tenants. And I, I believe we finally got in to the house um, <clears throat> around, around February, right before, right before we sent out the wholesale deal. So we finally got in, they finally let us in. We took pictures and we sent out the wholesale uh, um, email to our cash buyers list advertising this house for, or this deal for 499,000. Um, we had our cash buyer walkthrough on March 10th and we received offers. So bear in mind, we were advertising the deal at 499 and uh, no one liked it. The top offers we received were 350,000 and 400,000, which I was personally shocked by because I saw a house that didn't need a whole lot of work. And I thought maybe $10,000 would be good enough to polish it and put on the market. But those were the top offers. And um, based on that, you know, we weren't going to make any money wholesaling it. So we decided to close on it if we were able to work something out with the tenants. Um, on March 10th, we signed a cash for keys agreement with the tenants. Technically, it was a vacate agreement that Charlie Kovas drew up for us, who's I, I think going to present on this call later. Uh, so the vacate agreement, they... Um, basically laid out two options for the tenants. Option A was that they, we gave them 30 days to live for free after closing and then receive 3000 actually $3,500 it was upon move out. Or option B was to rent back to them for two months for uh, $1,650 a month, which is a really great rental rate for a house like that in Bull Mountain. Um, the reason that we put two options is because the tenants were like, we'd love to get the cash for keys. We just don't know if we can move out in 30 days. So just problem solving and said, okay, well, you know, we could give you more time, but we couldn't also give you the cash for keys, but we could rent back to you. And um, the, the tenants, they, they were good people. They'd just been kind of put through the ringer. It turned out that the tenants were family, um, were family of the seller and the seller didn't get along with his own family. That's why he never told us any of this stuff. And they just, they felt like they just wanted to get out of the situation, but they legitimately needed help to move. Um, so, so yeah, we wrote up that agreement and on March 15th, we closed on that house for 487,000. Um, on April 8th, everything went according to plan and the tenants moved out, which was very, uh, very exciting. And we all breathed a sigh of relief. On April 9th uh, through, sorry, I think my timeline is a little bit off here. Um, we listed it for sale. We listed it for sale on May 6th. So from April 9th to, to May 5th, we, um, we rehabbed the property. So it took us one month and uh, I'll go into what we did here. I think on the next slide. Oh, okay. So we, we did the cash for keys agreement. Here we go. Okay, did we close on it? Yeah, um, there's a picture of the 10. So here's what we did to it. We, we painted the upstairs bedrooms because they were funky and we knew it was kind of a tight deal with the cash for keys. Um, we figured out at, at a projected resale price of 600,000, um, it would be something like a $35,000 profit. Um, so we, we had to really be careful with what we spent money on, but our strategy was just clean up the property, fix what needs to be fixed and stage it and put it on the market. Um, we painted the upstairs bedrooms. We painted the downstairs ceiling, which was kind of like a cream color. So we made that white. We polished and straightened the kitchen cabinets. So it's, there's this old 90s style oak. So we got that polished. We straightened the cabinet doors. The fireplace was a um, really weird rock thing. So we just got rid of that and we put up new tile around the fireplace. We took down a non-conforming room in the garage. We made some deck repairs and repairs to the front steps. And we added a closet to the downstairs office to make the house a four bedroom instead of a three bedroom. We fixed the shower door and we cleaned the carpets and then we staged it. So you can see, um, if you just back up a slide, you know, we didn't remodel the bathroom. We didn't remodel the kitchen. We didn't 
paint the exterior, the interior. We just knew it's a good looking, like the, the house had a lot of curb appeal. It's in a great neighborhood. And we were like pricing wise, we were, we were making sure that we wouldn't lose money, but we were also kind of banking on the hot market, taking us potentially over asking. Um, so that's why we were willing to take on a, a thin deal where we were only counting on $35,000 profit. We were hoping for that it would go up over asking. At the end of the day, it was a, uh, we sold it for 635,000. So we listed for 599 um, and sold for 635. We only spent $13,018 on the repairs. We spent $3,500 cash for keys. So after the closing costs, the realtor fees and the, and the holding costs, it was $75,000 profit. So great deal for us. Um, once, you know, we, we spent a month waiting for the tenants to get out, but after that, it only took us a month to turn it around. Um, we, we only got three offers. So definitely the buyer feedback was, uh, we, we showed it to a lot of people. The buyer feedback was that, you know, the kitchen was dated, the bathroom was dated, people wanted the updates, but there was still people out there that were okay with the house that, that would take it like that. Um, so we got, we got three offers they were all over asking and we made 75,000 on it so you know again great deal for us um one thing i i'd like to point out tongue in cheek is that you all had the opportunity to buy it at the 499 and everybody passed on it they said that the numbers don't work but uh at that price you would have been at $66,000 profit for a pretty darn easy deal um so you know we we love these a couple takeaways. One is be willing to work with tenants and just practice patience and understanding. It doesn't always work, but a lot of the times it does. So with these tenants, we just had to listen to them and just, you know, put the phone on speaker and, and work on other things just as they're talking to us and telling us their, their story um, and then being empathetic to them. Number two is don't overdo your budget, your rehab budget. At least in this market with those crazy numbers that Trent just showed we could get a get away with essentially delivering a, a product that's safe where everything works everything is fixed but it doesn't necessarily need to be everything brand new um so we thought that we had a nice house and we just presented it its best and it worked for us um and then if you get the house at a good price a bit of cleaning and staging goes a long way Scott, thank you so much. That is, that is crazy. There's a whole lot to unpack there for sure. It sounds like well, as you were, you know, just having conversations with those tenants, it sounds like you uncovered some black swans, uh, for example, like their relationship with the seller and maybe some shady, risky dealings with the property management company slash realtor and just, wow, it's chock full. I'm sure Charles has uh, lots of interesting insight into the potential legality issues there. And so, no, that is that is that is wild. Um, hey, Taylor, can I ask two questions real quick? Please. Okay, my first question is, and I might have three actually. First question is, do you know what the rental rate was for the house before they stopped paying rent? I think it was out to 1650. Okay. Uh, and then do you know what repairs? Cause obviously from your rehab work, it, you know, it didn't look like it needed a whole lot. Do you know what no. the repairs were that caused them to stop paying rent? There was no front door lock or sliding door lock in the back of the house. So the house was unsecured. And so they would go in through the, the side gate and then kind of through the through the back door and according to them they'd ask the owner many times to fix it and he just wouldn't and so they so, felt justified in withholding rent because of that so uh, Which a hundred dollar story a hundred dollar repairs and locks yep. costed him months of rent yeah okay yeah interesting and, um did you have another question because there's something else um, after you ask that question there's something else i want to i want to point out uh, no, the, I, I actually only had two, so go for it. Okay. These are some of our favorite deals is um, 90s houses on the absentee owners list. There are, we, we, we uncover, we uncover um, wealth, well-to-do parents with sort of screwed up kids. 
not screwed up kids, but just kids that are going through a lot and they buy the houses for their, for their adult children. And um, they live in it for three to five years. They deed it up. And that's not exactly the case in this one, but we've gotten a, a couple other deals very similar to this one. So, um, so just have your radar out and your antenna up for those types of deals with sort of newer houses because the parents buy them for like nice houses for the kids to live in the parents work at intel or nike they, they beat it up they move out and then they sell it to a wholesaler and those ones we don't need to pick up at ridiculously low prices but if we could get them for 120k or so under um under zillow then we can we can make 60 to 70 or 80 on it on a wholesale deal and, That's and, great insight. And then my, my last question is, is, and I think you kind of explained it to me when we were talking about this deal when I saw you, what, what can you define wholesale? Because I know what wholesale yeah, is. Um, wholesale is just a, a term for flipping without doing anything to it. So everyone's definition differs a little bit, but you know we didn't do any renovations. We just fixed what needed to be fixed and made it present well. We call it a wholesale deal where you close on it and you put it on the MLS. Got it. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Right. And on. Uh, and you know, it's it's a good opportunity for anyone out there to buy wholesalers deals. A lot of times you could get them cheap enough if you have cash available to you to buy them um, at wholesale price and put it on the market. Um, for those of you that are fortunate enough to have a big pile of cash, sometimes you could get them from wholesalers cheap enough to just do that. And we've had it, we've had people buy our deals and just put them on the market like that, essentially wholetailing what they buy from us and are extremely profitable. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, thank you so much, Scott. Thank um, you. Without any further ado,